kalian jangan sering-sering ke sungai itu. Welcome back everyone. Today I will recap the 2022 Indonesian horror film named Buyut. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Ayu playing with her brother. While playing, their ball goes into the nearby river and Ayu goes to get the ball. Her brother asks her to hurry as it is about to get dark and Ayu tells him to bring a stick as her hand is not reaching the ball. During this, the ball goes under the water, and when her brother goes to get the stick, an entity pulls Ayu into the river. After a while, when her brother comes back, he gets terrified seeing that Ayu has gone. We then see Bima and Kanaya, and Bima tells her that the house he bought from the auction can now be occupied, and today they are going over there. They then reach their new house, where their housekeeper Mr. Jaja welcomes them and tell them to let him know if they want anything. Now Kanaya sees a painting in the house which she finds very strange, and only then she gets scared seeing a girl there. Bima calms her down, and Kanaya asks him whose child is that. Bima goes to her and finds that she is Maying, and he asks her where is her mother, but she remains silent. Bima then tells Kanaya that she is Jaja's daughter, and she can't speak yet. After this, he takes Kanaya to see the swimming pool, which she likes a lot. They both sit there by the pool, and Kanaya asks Bima why was he interested to buy this house. Bima says this house has its own value for him, and she likes swimming, so he chose the one with the swimming pool. Suddenly bubbles start rising in the swimming pool, due to which Kanaya gets very scared. But when she does not see anyone there, she relaxes, however, suddenly someone pulls her inside the pool. She asks Bima for help, but Bima thinks she is joking, but then he realizes she is serious and helps her get out of the pool. Once out, she asks him why did he push her anyway, and then she leaves there. Now that night, Kanaya is still angry with him, and Bima apologizes to her and tells her that he really doesn't know who pushed her. He then says it looks like he will be working overtime tomorrow, so he will come home at night. The next day, Kanaya wakes up and finds that Bima has already left for the office. She goes to the washroom and finds some strands of hair due to which she gets angry. She vigorously starts brushing her teeth, due to which her mouth starts bleeding, and she finds that her teeth are falling. Then suddenly a tap turns on, and as Kanaya is about to turn it off, Mayan comes there. Kanaya turns off the tap and notices that her face is completely normal. Later, Kanaya asks Jaja who was the owner of this house, to which he says he doesn't know either. Bima only said that the owner of this house had died. Now that night, Kanaya finds Mayang playing sitting on the floor. She goes to her and says that she is going for swimming, and she too should go to sleep after playing. However, when she starts leaving there, she sees Mayang sleeping in her room. She gets shocked seeing this, and when she looks back, Mayang is sitting on the bed. Kanaya gets terrified of this and leaves from there. After this Kanaya goes swimming, where we see that there is someone else with her in the pool, whom she is unaware of. Suddenly someone grabs her and tries to pull her inside, and we see Mayang standing by the poolside. Meanwhile, Bima returns home, hears her scream, and finds her unconscious in the pool. He brings her out with the help of Jaja and manages to bring her to her senses. The next day, Kanaya asks him where are the hair and whose house is this. Or maybe, this is his house with her mistress. Bima doesn't understand what she is saying, and he reveals that this is his family's house, but he doesn't know anything about hair. Kanaya asks him why he didn't tell her that this is her parents' house, to which he says he didn't want her to refuse to live in her family's inheritance house. Later, he tell her that he had a surprise for her earlier, but she was angry. He says he wants to take her to Banu Banning village. He has an assignment there, and maybe they will stay there for five days. Later, they reach the village, where they are welcomed by the villagers, and they perform a traditional dance for them. Village chief Ingar welcomes them again and tells them that this village is a village with a thousand traditions. Bima thanks him for the lively welcome and introduces her wife to him. One of the dancers Lana asks them to stop by her house, as she is very happy that a female friend has come to this village. Later, Bima tells Ingar that they will be here for four to five days, as his office job requires him to record the number of residents here. Ingar tells him that the total family heads here are around 65, consisting of 219 men, and about 66 women. Bima says there are very few women here, and he saw that most of them were old women and children. Ingar says most women who live in this village prefer to go out of town for school. He then introduces his son Andes to them and asks him to take them to their room. On the way, he tells them that this village is protected by the government. They will find many unique traditions that they have not seen before, and that is why this village is very culturally guarded. Even though this village is famous as one with a thousand traditions, most people are reluctant to come to this village as they think of it as a cursed village. Only then do they hear some noises, and Kanaya asks Bima why all the people here ringing the gong. Andes tells them that residents must ring the gong at 6 o'clock every day, 
to indicate that it's getting dark. For girls who have reached puberty and young mothers who have not had children, they are not allowed to leave the house at night. If it's violated, that means they are ready to give themselves up to Buyu. He then brings them to their room and tells them to look for him at the mosque if they need anything. That night, we see Kaneya going into the woods with a lamp in her hand and suddenly someone grabs her leg, but it turns out to be a nightmare. Bima calms her down and offers her water and she tells him that she just had a dream about a woman in the river of this village and it looks like she has been waiting for her for a long time. Bima says she is just tired and needs some rest. Meanwhile, Lana brings dinner for her boyfriend Huda and he asks her why she is putting herself in danger just to deliver the food. Lana says he has to taste her cooking first, as she is afraid he will leave her if he doesn't like the food. Huda asks her to go home as he doesn't want her to get caught by the villagers. Lana then leaves there, but Andy stops her on the way and tells her that she has violated the rules of the village. He says Huda is nobody to her, and it's better if she just marries him and leaves Huda, and he will keep all her secrets. Lana says she will not leave Huda for someone like him, and Andy starts misbehaving with her, to which she slaps him and tell him not to mess with her. The next morning, Kanea goes to the riverside, and as she enters the river, her leg gets stuck there, and suddenly a hand grabs her leg. She gets terrified of this, and only then Lana comes there and hands her the towel. Kanea thanks her and asks her why are there so few women in this village, to which she tells her that this village is a cursed village. All the women in this village are always in fear of Buyut's existence. If a young woman and a woman who has not had children leave the house at sunset, the village head will kill that woman and throw her into this river. Kanaya asks her what does Buyut look like, to which she says until now no one really knows what it looks like. Her mother used to tell her that it is a woman with a scary face. Almost every month, there will be a woman who dies, but she doesn't know why it has to be women who are sacrificed. Some of her friends are sacrificed, and others fled to another village. Later, Bima tells Kanaya that Andy's told him that there will be one citizen who will be sacrificed tonight. Meanwhile, Andy's with some other locals goes to Darce's house and says he knows Lana is inside. She begs him not to take her daughter, but Andy's drags her out of the house. Darcy tries to stop him and begs him to take her instead of Lana, but Andy's kicks her and begins leaving there. Only then Huda comes there to stop them, to which Andy's says Lana has broken the rules of this village, so she will be sacrificed to Buyu. Huda tries to fight him, but he stabs him with a knife, due to which he dies. The next day, Bima asks a woman why is this village so quiet, to which she tells them that last night someone died, and that's why all the villagers went to the river for the offering ritual. She warns them not to go to that river often, as a demon lives in it and residents here call it Buya. Kanaya asks her who died, to which she tells her it's Lana. We then see some villagers performing an offering ritual in the river, and Bima and Kanaya also reach there. She asks Bima why is everyone looking at her like that, to which he says maybe it's just odd for them to see a stranger. Engar then comes to them and says he hopes they feel comfortable living in this village. Bima says they are very comfortable, however, Kanaya asks him what rituals are the people doing here. He tells her this is one of the traditions in this village, and all citizens must follow the rules of the village if they don't want any family members to die because of Buyu. This river is the source of life, so in return, they should be able to return the favor back for the good of this river. This ritual is something they dedicate to Buyu, the guardian of this river. If the corpses of citizens drown in this river and come to the surface, that means it was not accepted and it had the opposite effect. Kanaya gets angry and says returning favor does not mean the villagers should be sacrificed to Buyu, to which Ingar says she is new here so don't talk carelessly. Bima apologizes to him and then leaves there with Kanaya. Kanaya tells Bima that she knows something is not right in this village, and now she understands why all the girls here disappear. Bima says this is none of their business, to which she says if he doesn't believe her, then she will find out the truth herself. Bima says he doesn't want her to get involved in this matter, so they will go home tomorrow. Later that night, we see two villagers Ratno and Mon fishing in the river, but for a long time, they were not getting any fish. They both start talking about Buyut, and Mon says the head of the village said that Buyut will not appear again. Lana's body was not found, which means that her body has been received by Buyut. Only then Mon feels that a big fish is trapped in his net, However, Buyut pulls him into the river. Ratno gets terrified seeing this, and then Buyut appears in front of him, causing him to fall into the river. He tries to get out of the water, but Buyut pulls him too. The next day, villagers find their dead bodies, and Andes tells his father that they lost their people again. Ingar says they have to force Mr. Trisno to talk to them, because he was the one who knew how to stop Buyut. On the other hand, a girl tells Kanea about the dead bodies found in the village and that people were saying they were pulled by Buyut when they were fishing. Kanaya asks her if could she go over there, to which she says yes, but it's better if she doesn't go because the bodies are already rotting. 
Kanaya asks her if she knows where Lana's house is, to which she says no and leaves there. Kanaya then sees Bima is busy talking to Ingar, so she sets out to find out Lana's house. She reaches the riverside, where she meets a girl, who tells her that she knows the way to Mrs. Darcy's place, and asks her to follow her. Kanaya asks her why she wants to take her there, to which she says she just wants to help her and doesn't trust everyone in this village. Kanaya asks her what is actually going on in this village, to which she says this village is not a good place for someone like her. It's enough that she had to experience all the bitterness, lust, envy, revenge, and polytheism that became one emotion that made this village curse forever. Meanwhile, we see Bima looking for Kanaya, and a villager tells him that maybe she went that way. On the other hand, Ingar and Andes visits Trisno, who asks him why he is here. He says he regrets following his orders, and what more does he want from him? Ingar says he has to help him in the villager, to which Trisno tells him he doesn't have much time left, but he will never follow him again. Now here Ingar asks him if doesn't he want to see her daughter Kanaya again, and here it is revealed that Bima is Ingar's son and Kanaya is Trisno's daughter. Trisno gets angry to know this and he tells Ingar that only Kanaya can remove the curse. Knowing this, Ingar gets furious and he kills Trisno. After this, we are shown a flashback, in which Trisno's wife Sui gives birth to twin girls, but one of them was deformed. Trisno gets upset knowing this, and he tells Darcy not to let the people know about this, as he doesn't want his child to be considered a devil's child. Darcy then notices that Sui is dead, and it breaks Trisno. Darcy calms him down and says she will help him take care of his children. Trisno says he will name them Kanaya and Ratty, and asks her to take Kanaya back to her house and he will take care of Ratty. After Darcy leaves, Ingar comes there with Andes. He says this village is sacred, so how her wife gave birth to such an imperfect child. His deformed child is clear evidence that God hates him. He then asks Andes to tell the villagers about this as they should know that Trisno brought a curse upon this village. Soon after, villagers gather around Trisno's house and ask him to come out. Now when Trisno comes out, Ingar asks him to get rid of that baby. Trisno goes to the river with Ratty and he drowns her in the river. Ingar then says that's what he gets for stealing Sui away from him, and warns him not to try to be the leader of this village. Darcy tells Kanaya that after this, Trisno refused to eat, and it led him to being sick. When he started being sick, she brought Kanaya to him, but he didn't want to see her because he was afraid Kanaya would suffer the same fate as Ratty. When Kanaya was seven, she took the initiative herself to bring her to town and drop her off at an orphanage there, with hopes that she would survive the village head. Everything she did was with Mr. Trisno's approval. Since that moment, the curse of this village became true. Many victims drowned in that river. The village head has two children named Bima and Ayo. Ayu drowned in the river while playing with her brother Bima. Kanaya shows her childhood picture to her and asks her if this is Kanaya she is talking about. To which she says yes, and here Kanaya tells her that she is the same girl in the picture. She tells her she is Bima's wife, and Darcy gets shocked and tells her that she should be careful. She asks her to go and see her dad. On the other hand, we see Bima stopping his dad from killing Trisno. He says he did everything he asked him to. He married Kanaya and brought her back here. However, if he is going to hurt her, he won't let him. Engar says Kanaya is the reason that Buyut is in the village, so she has to be responsible for all this. He asks Andes to look for her and Bima tries to stop them, but Andes pushes him back and tells him not to get involved in this. After he leaves, Trisno asks Bima to find Kanaya before nightfall. Engar is a lecherous and cunning person, and he used Buyut's story to make those girls turn into his victims. He also reveals that Andes has a mom and her name is Marlena. Andes doesn't know that his mother was killed by his own adoptive father. Meanwhile, we see Kanaya in the woods, where she finds a girl, and she asks her what she is doing here. The girl asks her what she is looking for, and that she has waited long for her. The girl turns towards her, seeing that she gets scared, and then the girl falls into the river. She then comes out of the water and begins moving towards Kanaya, and then she spits some black liquid into her mouth. It shows her a vision, in which Ingar tells Trisno to choose between Kanaya and Ratty, and with no choice left, he chooses Kanaya over Ratty. We then see that the villagers have tied up Kanaya, and Ingar says he has been waiting for her. He purposely sent Bima to the orphanage, so that he can follow her wherever she go. Andes then says this woman broke the laws of this village and she is childless, so she deserves to be sacrificed. Kanaya tells the villagers that they have been deceived by the village head. But Ingar hits her and tells her that she has broken the rules of this village, so she has to suffer the consequences. Now here she reveals that she is pregnant with Bima's child, so she will have a baby soon and she will no longer be breaking the rule. Knowing this, Ingar knocks her unconscious and tells them to throw her into the river and make sure she drowns. Now as Anders throws her into the river, Bima comes there and jumps into the river to save her, but he doesn't find her. He then confronts Ingar and tells him that he is the true devil. He tells everyone that he is Ingar's real son, but he is no longer his father. He is a disease to this village and they have all been lied to. 
He then asks Andes, does he remember Marlena? His mom was a victim of his lust too. Now Andes asks the villagers to find the village head and capture him. Meanwhile, Kanea comes out of the water and gets terrified seeing the ghosts of all the girls who have been sacrificed, but the very next moment they all disappear from there. Now as she tries to get out, Rada's ghost grabs her and spits a black liquid into her mouth. Vingar then encounters Kanaya. He goes to her, but gets terrified seeing that she is possessed and then she grabs him and throws him into the water. He tries to escape, but the ghost of all the girls appears in front of him and he begs Ratty to forgive him. Ratty says he is the true devil and he should not be forgiven. She says hell is waiting for him and then they all grab him and Ratty drowns him in the river. Here villagers tell Andes that they could not find Ingar, to which he tells them to help Bima find his wife before it's too late. He then apologizes to Bima, saying that he was blinded by Angar's evil deeds, and he regrets everything bad that he did to this village. Bima says there is no use being sorry for what has happened, and it's better for them to fix everything that they lost and destroyed. Meanwhile, villagers find Kanaya and they call Bima and Andes there. Bima tries to wake her up, and then Rada's spirit comes there to wake her up, and she comes back to her senses. The next day, she rushes to see her father, who before dying tells her that he is proud of her and apologizes for not being with her. We then see her at her dad's grave, and she says what he did with her and Ratty was not by choice. Sacrificing one child for another after losing his beloved wife was not easy. She learned the meaning of sacrifice from him. Also, patience and sincerity. Buyu does not evil like what they say. Humans with a rotten heart and humans who let lust take over their minds, that's the real devil. Now she realized that everything that has happened is not because of the devil, jinn, or demons, but because of the things humans do. Bima and Kanaya then return back to their house and Kanaya asks Jaja where is Maying. Jaja gets shocked to hear this and tells her that Maying died three years ago by drowning in the pool at the back. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.